I'm here on the Marlborough Downs for a metal detecting event and I've got a day to kill so I've decided to go for a walk in a place called Firefield Down. It's an ancient landscape with chalk in the soil. It really actually looks very appealing to a metal detectorist. <laughs> um, it's very different to where I come from. Everywhere in the soil are these pieces of flint and chalk and it's, it's well known as an ancient Neolithic Bronze Age landscape. I'm very close to Avebury Stone Circle and very close to Stonehenge. So I'm going to go for a walk to see if I can find a really amazing megalith, a big stone. It's actually now fallen. I'm not sure if we're going to find it because it's apparently very difficult to find, but I'm going to try my best. I've got about five miles to walk, I think. I love walking though, so that's not a problem for me. There are sarsen stones sprinkled across the landscape, huge boulders that were used to build the Avebury stone circle. The soil here is full of chalk, it's like a chalk dam and amazing views all around. The ground is full of flint. And chalk, chalk and flint go together I think in geological terms. What an amazing landscape this is. I'm actually just crouched here behind this big pile of gorse because there's quite a wind blowing across the downs. I'm following a path which was the original byway between London and Bath. It must have heaps of artefacts dropped all along it, but of course you can't detect here. But the whole place is sprinkled with these giant sarsen stones, big boulders and uh, I'm on the lookout for a special stone that was used by Neolithic people to polish and shape stone axes. You know those beautiful axes that you see sometimes in museums or people are sometimes lucky enough to find them that have a highly polished surface and they're sort of ellipse shaped, really beautiful sculptural objects. Well, we're going to go and see a stone that was used to make that. And so what's special about this is I know when I approach this big polissoir stone, this is a place where Neolithic people would have known about and would have come with their stone axes that they were working on and would have sat here for hours and hours working on them. So it feels quite special. I feel like I'm in an ancient landscape and I feel, I don't know, it feels very peaceful. It's lovely. I'm going off the beaten track here a bit. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. Wow. I can see it. Look at that. It's actually shining in the sun. How? lovely that is and look at all these ridges and grooves in the stone being made by tools wow and this basin which has a kind of sheen it's obviously like a polishing stone smooth much smoother than the rest of the stone actually really nice to just sit here and just contemplate all the people that must have come here and used this stone to polish and wet their stone axes. Apparently this recumbent stone was once a standing stone. You can only imagine how many thousands of passes of the axes there must have been to end up with such beautiful polished ridges. I've just been looking at them and thinking how each ridge does a slightly different job. So this, this one here is very shallow and has obviously been used with water as a kind of whetstone to polish the shallow edges of the stone axis. But then this one has a very sharp ridge would have helped to make very sharp edges on the axe. This one's shallower even still, this one's quite broad. It's really interesting isn't it? If you're a fan of megaliths this is definitely one to come and see. Usually you bury about 
about a third of something that you want to stand upright in the ground. So I need to wriggle up a bit then. Yeah, it's about shoulder height. I was just thinking, how did Neolithic people find that stone? Because there are no kind of landmarks, but of course what I'm walking on is a ridgeway. This must be an ancient track. Oh, I'm really, really thrilled to have seen that. And it's quite hard to find, but I'm glad I made the trek. everyone i'm up early i'm going to a dig in berkshire today and it is the most beautiful day i'm driving across the marlborough downs and it's just beautiful there's red brick traditional houses and thatched cottages and it's a bright sunny day it's like this is what it's all about i'm excited so let's go and see if we can find anything i don't very often find anything at these digs so prepare for a very very dull video amazing countryside it's kind of like epic rolling hills and beautiful fields full of rapeseed and it feels like summer is on its way really lovely i'm excited about this this is what detecting is all about isn't it a sunny day early start promise the promise of a good find hopefully that I haven't done my normal research so I have absolutely no idea where I am, what's around here. Oh, look at hare running through the road. Look at him go. It's the second hare I've seen this last week. Last time I saw a hare I found that Roman bracelet. So, this could bode well. Beautiful place. Not beautiful. We're in the countryside now. There's something very big here. I, I don't know if this is a cartwheel penny. I mean, it's almost too big, I think. trouser rub. Maybe it is a cartwheel penny. Big anyway. So far this has been really fun. Perfect weather. It reminds you what this is all about. But I haven't found much yet. I found a couple of fragments of a buckle. I found a... oh I've got a signal here. I found a... Um, a load of shotgun caps and uh, yeah, cutwheel penny. I think that's about it actually. Let's see what this is. Just a wee button. Yeah, so a little bit frustrating so far, I think I will say. Uh, it's always Digs are always a bit like this, you know, you, it's, it's annoying because you pay 20 quid to come to a dig and you just don't know if you're going to be lucky or not. But apparently there were some really good things found here in the last couple of weeks in this area. Someone found a silver stator, there have been Roman coins found. So we keep trying. I'm going to get an iced bun from the car. I feel like I need to pick me up. Right, 
like you lot, I have to admit, I stopped filming after I had my ice spun because I just, it was not the best for finds and I just thought this is so boring <laughs> for you guys to watch. So I thought I'd show you what I found when I got back and I suppose I've had a few quite interesting finds. This big one over here is indeed a cartwheel penny. I can now see that, the, the head of King George. Um, that's a coin that was made in 1797. So that's a pretty old coin actually and I'm I'm impressed with it because it's just so massive. <laughs> I also found another Georgian penny but this is a more recent one and it's really very very bad condition. A couple of little buckle fragments and this thing was probably the saving grace of the day. This is a fragment of a purse bar and I could tell that by the ridge and also by these little holes which would have been used to string that to a leather pouch. A um, couple of interesting, well actually not interesting at all, but one normal button and this one is quite nice. This is a livery button, um, would have been used by staff from a, a big important wealthy family estate. I can't really see what that thing is, I think it's like a lion, I'm not sure whether it's attacking something or I'm not sure. I think it's quite a common design for a livery button and it's nice that it's still got some of its kind of gilding on it. Found a nice piece of pottery which I'm pretty certain is Roman. There's a lot of Roman activity around that area. And also some various bits of artillery. Loads and loads of kind of um, military stuff because it's very near an RAF base. And then a couple of musket balls, one of which is very large, which I think is one of those brown bess kinds of musket ball. I leave this dig with the comment of one of my friends who said, if you turned up at the dig at eight in the morning and the guy on the gate handed you a little bag with all this stuff in it and said, that'd be £20, please. <laughs> Would you accept the bag? And it was a really interesting question and we all contemplated it as we ate our picnic and I thought to myself, well, clearly not. I mean, it's it's not worth a bean, is it, any of this stuff? But would I pay 20 quid to hang out with great friends and spend a day in a quiet field in the sunshine? Absolutely, I would. I'd do it again tomorrow. So thank you very much to the Berkshire Metal Detecting Group who welcomed us. And thank you to my friends for an ace day. Sorry to you guys that I haven't got anything more interesting to show you, but hey ho, this is the reality of it. And I still think there's some pretty nice finds there. So I look forward to seeing you all again for the next one. Don't forget to subscribe, everyone.